Hi everyone! In the next few videos, we'll explore how we approach the sky and clouds created for the shot using Terrigen's atmosphere features. We'll begin by sharing a technique to break up the perfect blue sky gradient that can be used in almost any sky situation. Adding a very subtle two-dimensional cloud layer to the atmosphere can introduce some randomness and create visual interest in our project. Click on the Atmosphere button on the top toolbar to access the node list in the Atmosphere layout. Then, click on the Add Cloud Layer button and select High Level Cirrus 2D to add the cloud layer to the project. Rename the cloud layer to something descriptive like Cirrus Breakup Sky. Already, you can see the cloud formation in the 3D preview, and we can enhance the view by enabling the Ray Trace Preview mode by clicking on the RTP button. You can change the appearance of the clouds by clicking on the Pattern button at the bottom of the node list. On the Settings window that appears, click the Random Seed button and watch how the cloud formations update as the cloud pattern changes. Now that we've found a cloud pattern we're happy with, we'll reduce the cloud's opacity until it's almost invisible. This will be just enough to break up the perfect blue sky gradient. Close the setting window and then reduce the cloud density value under the main tab to about 0.004 until there is just a hint of clouds in the sky. As you can see from these renders, adding the two-dimensional cloud layer is a good way to start creating a more naturalistic and interesting environment. For the remainder of this video, we'll focus on the dense cloud cover at the beginning of our shot, which will hide the aircraft and the terrain below. Our first consideration was to determine the point at which the aircraft would break through the cloud cover, and we glimpsed the train beneath them for the first time. For this, we chose the frame 115. Next, we decided that the best approach would be to use multiple cloud layers, and not to try to do everything with just one cloud layer. We started by adding one of Terrigen's Easy Cloud presets found under the Add Cloud Layer button. Choose the Low Level Cumulus Large preset and rename it to something descriptive like Cumulus Hide Aircraft. The new cloud layer appears in the 3D preview. We want the cloud layer's altitude to be similar to that of the camera and aircraft, which is about 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters. We can do that by increasing the cloud base altitude under the main tab. You may have to experiment a bit to find the right value because each cloud layer has its own unique pattern, which can be changed by clicking on the Random Seed button. For our shot, the right altitude was when the cloud layer was slightly above and below our point of view on frame 115. Next, we need to set the size and position of the cloud layer so that its edge is clearly visible as the three aircraft emerge. To do that, we'll make sure we're on frame 115 of the animation. Then go to a top view of the project and zoom out a bit. The size or radius of a cloud layer is shown by the dotted circle around the center of the cloud. Reduce the radius value to about 4,000 meters. Select the cloud layer by right-clicking in the 3D preview and choosing it from the list of items under the Select Object or Shader option. Enable the Ray Trace Preview mode by clicking on the RTP button at the top of the 3D preview. Sometimes the cloud cover is difficult to distinguish from the terrain, so to better see the cloud pattern within the radius, we can temporarily increase the cloud density setting to a very high value, like 10. Now we can drag the cloud layer into position by hovering over the red or blue axis handles until one is highlighted, then left-clicking it and dragging it until the cloud edge is close to the approximate position of the aircraft. Alternatively, you could enter a value directly into the X or Z axis fields of the center setting. Disable the Ray Traced Preview mode by clicking on the RTP button at the top of the 3D preview. Return to the camera view. Enable the Ray Trace Preview mode and continue to adjust the position of the cloud layer along the X and Z axis until the leading edge of the cloud is precisely where you want it. Remember that our goal was to see the edge of the cloud formation and start to reveal the terrain beneath the three aircraft as they start to emerge. Now that we know where the cloud layer ends, 
we can concentrate on how the clouds will look throughout the first 115 frames. Right now the clouds are too tall, so let's reduce that by setting the cloud depth value to 1,500 meters. We'll primarily use three settings to shape the look of the clouds. The cloud density, coverage, and variation. And often need to adjust these settings simultaneously while scrubbing through the timeline in order to see the effect of the adjustments at different points in the shot. Return the cloud density setting to about 0.1, which is a more realistic starting point. This setting controls the transparency of the cloud layer, and we want the clouds to be just dense enough to hide the aircraft. The covered setting attempts to fill in the cloud layer to the maximum allowed by the defining noise pattern and extent of its radius and depth. Reducing the value will allow gaps to form between parts of the cloud. Increasing the value will fill up any gaps, creating denser, taller, and fuller clouds up to the limits of the depth and radius settings. It provides the ability to vary the look of the cloud while preserving its overall pattern, whereas changing the seed value would generate a completely different cloud formation. The variation setting controls the visibility of very large-scale noise patterns within the cloud. It can reduce the cloud's layer density in some places and increase it in other places. Likewise, it can reduce the cloud layer's coverage in some places and increase it in others. This setting is useful for generating randomness and is most notable when viewing a large expanse of the cloud layer and when the cloud layer covers an area much larger than the depth of the cloud. When working with smaller clouds, it tends to push them in random directions, which makes the rest of the settings more unpredictable. These are the final settings we chose for the shot. And here is a render of the cloud layer that we've created so far. As you can see, the cloud layer is obscuring the aircraft from time to time, but we can still see a lot of blue sky and terrain. We want to create additional cloud layers to conceal these areas. We can block out a large section of blue sky in the background by adding another easy cloud preset just as before. Give this new cloud layer a descriptive name, like Cumulus Hide Background Sky. And then position this cloud layer deep into the background, around 80 kilometers into the distance. This cloud layer should also be at an altitude similar to the previous cloud layer, about 2,600 meters. Since the cloud is so far away, we can adjust a few settings to make it more visible. First, increase its size by setting the radius value to around 96 kilometers. We can sculpt the shape of the clouds by adjusting the coverage and variation settings. Just as with the previous cloud layer, increasing the coverage value will fill more of the space allowed by the cloud layer's depth and radius. And increasing the variation value can introduce randomness, especially in a larger cloud layer like this. We used a coverage value of 1 and a variation value of 2 to give the cloud layer its final shape. Now that the cloud layer is visible, you can adjust its center on the x-axis in order to shift the clouds to the left or right to get the best composition. We chose a value of 21,851 meters for the x-axis. Here's our final settings. And a render of where we're at with the two cloud layers in place. As you can see from the render, we now have a dense layer of clouds in the background that covers much of the blue sky and adds visual interest to the shot. Let's conceal most of the visible terrain in the foreground by adding another easy cloud layer. This cloud layer will also provide some additional cloud interest for the three aircraft to fly through. Add another easy cloud preset just as before. and set its altitude and depth similar to that of the other two cloud layers. We'll position this cloud layer closer to the foreground by setting its center on the z-axis to around negative 22,200 meters and reduce its radius to around 10,000 meters because we don't want it to extend farther than the cloud layer edge we've already established. Increase the coverage value to one and the variation value to 2. Adjust the center x value as needed to create a pleasing composition and hide as much of the foreground terrain as possible.
we ended up using a value of negative 1,058 meters. Here are our final settings and a render of where we're at in the project so far. As you can see, most of the terrain is hidden from view until the three aircraft break through the cloud layer, just as we wanted. To complete the cloud cover that is visible in the first 115 frames of our shot, we'll add one final cloud layer above the rest. Artistically, this will help to hide the small amount of blue sky remaining in the shot and add some parallax between the cloud layers. Since this cloud is higher up in the atmosphere, we'll use a different type of cloud to create some visual variation. Add another easy cloud preset, but this time choose the low level stratocumulus preset and rename it to something descriptive like stratocumulus upper atmosphere. We've chosen this preset because its default settings create a fairly thick cloud layer over a wide area. To raise the cloud layer higher in altitude above the other cloud layers, increase the cloud base altitude value to around 3,250 meters. And we can slightly shift the cloud layer's position to the left, so it's a bit more visible. We'll also adjust the cloud layer's coverage, variation, and cloud density settings in exactly the same ways we've done with the other cloud layers in our project, until we're happy with the look of them. This cloud preset has an additional setting called Growth. Adjusting this setting constricts or expands each cloud. As the value is lowered, the clouds appear to evaporate, losing size, and becoming more transparent. Raising the value causes each cloud to expand and become more dense and opaque. Here's the final setting chosen for the stratocumulus cloud layer, and a render showing all of the cloud layers in the scene so far. As you can see, by building up cloud layers using Terrigen's Easy Cloud presets, we can generate complex and realistic cloud patterns and weather conditions. In our next video, we'll continue to add new cloud layers to the project, which will form the massive thunderclouds in the sky. We hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.